turns that on. Thank you. I forgot to set that up. So do some problem solving. You know, a lot of these problems that we're going to do. You know, you do the mathematics. You click on the numbers, and you get a number, and you and you and you're like looking at it and just throw in that, throw it in as an answer, and not thinking about the answer. I understand. You know, we're not going to. I'm not here to make you a chemist. You, all of you have a, a goal of what you want to do. This is a class that you need to take to reach your goal. My job here is to help you to get there. So I hope if anything, you take anything away is uh, looking at problem solving, critical thinking, and uh, hopefully, because that kind of stuff really helps you throughout your career. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of examples of, of real life examples of how that works, but we'll, we'll get to those as we come. I have nine children. And I have nine grandchildren. Okay, so pretty busy. Point in saying this is that I understand a lot of you, especially in the evening classes, are are married, have, have have you know jobs and and so forth. And I fully understand the the challenges of family, work, and education. It is a tough thing to handle, and and uh, so. I, I will work with you. I understand sometimes you can't do certain things with respect to maybe doing an exam at a certain time. I will work with you, but you gotta let me know if you need to change the time. I can I have a little bit of latitude if an exam is a certain day, but you can't because of work or children are sick. I can work with you. I can go maybe one or two days forward or backwards, but you gotta let me know, okay? Let me know beforehand. Please don't, don't, send me an email the day of and say, oh, by the way, okay, so, all right, so you got, we're going to talk, we're going to talk 16 weeks of chemistry, That's a lot of information, okay, a lot of information, and we're going to be really touching the tip of the tip of the iceberg of different aspects of chemistry, okay, so, you know, it's going to take a lot of work, it's going to take some investment, and one way that I personally uh, treated my education is I thought of my education as a job, a full-fledged job. Uh, and therefore, I devoted and set aside an X amount of time. And I really got into the habit of just set amount of time to do my job. Because yes, I know you're not getting paid for it. But I guarantee you at the end of the at the end of the rainbow, as they speak, that piece of paper is going to open up things for you that you at this point may not be aware of. I never in my life growing up in that little small mining town back in the 50s and 60s that I would eventually get a doctorate and work on products and products processes that were used around the world. Uh, and I couldn't have done that without that piece of paper. And so my job here is to help you achieve your goal of whatever that goal may be and get you through chemistry. Now, it's not gonna be given to you. It's gonna take work, okay? Take some work. So um, a lot of people ask me, what, am I required to do this? Am I required to do that? You know, my answer is this, you know, this is your class. You pay your money for this class. You are the customer, okay? This is a product that you purchase and I'm here to present that product. And so, um, you know, I will tell you, yes, we got some, rules and regulations, but, you know, uh, coming to class, for example. I'm not going to say you come to class. I mean, we're all over 21 here, right? This is your goal. This is your your education. I'm more on that in a second. So anyway, it's going to require a lot of a lot of uh, your time to present, because I know in that taking this class, you may be taking three, not only this class, but maybe two or three more. All right, so you really got to organize your time. Um, if this is your first class and maybe you've been out of school for a while, it's going to take some time. You might, there are, are services for students that help you with study habits and ways to study. I might suggest you get enrolled in some of these. Okay, because um, a lot of it's trial and error, trying to figure out what works for you, because what works for me may not work for you at all. I can only offer suggestions to, for you to try. What are we going to have? We're going to have online homework assignments. Okay. So we have 15 chapters. You're going to have 15 homework assignments. Every chapter is going to have a set of assignments. So that's going to keep you busy there. 
we're going to have five online exams covering all the chapters. We're roughly about three to four chapters per exam. Okay, so we're going to have five online exams. Okay, we're going to have activities for you to complete. Okay, activities, uh, approximately one activity per chapter. Now, and then finally at the end, we have one comprehensive final exam. Normally consists of about 60 multiple choice questions, which encompasses all the chapters that we covered. Now, the exams are generally are uh, 75 minutes long. Uh, they are timed. Uh, the final exam is at 110 minutes long. Th that also is timed. Uh, both the exam and the final exam are open up over a given time period. Okay. Uh, for first one, first exam number one is going to be open from noon to 10 p.m. So that's a range that you have the opportunity to go in there and knock out that exam. Okay, give yourself plenty of time because I just said it's you're allotted 75 minutes. Please don't come at 9:59 to start an exam that's going to be cut off at 10 p.m. and it will cut you off. Okay, all right. So we have one comprehensive exam. Online activities. Uh, I mentioned my SEC students here. You know, some some may be in there. Uh, I'm teaching both at, at two sessions at GCC and one session at SEC. Everybody has the same uh, information, same textbook, same everything. So uh, I put that in here. I'm going to add some more information for this about this here in, in a bit. Okay, but my SEC students that are here, you will have one additional. Uh, a chapter in your lab will be incorporated into your lecture, unlike the ones at GCC that the labs are separate. And you have one additional nomenclature test compared to SEC, GCC. Okay, so set schedule for, for time, study time, okay? make, it, make it a habit, it becomes a habit that you will carry to the rest of your life because your education is not going to stop once you get that piece of paper. You know, once you get into your field, whatever field that is, I guarantee you're going to continue to learn. You're going to be continued to require to take more classes. And, you know, on the other thing, someday you might be in my shoes teaching somebody, not necessarily in the college level, but at your uh, at your work. You may end up having to teach other people, you know, how this job is being done and so forth, how your job is being done. So, anyway, discipline yourself. You know, keep don't lose sight of your goal of getting that that piece of paper at the end because it will open up a lot of opportunity for you. Okay. Now, if you need help, it's nothing wrong about asking for help. Okay. I'm going to talk about opportunities for you to get help. But the key thing about seeking help is please get it early. Okay, please don't wait until like two, three weeks before the end of the semester to come and say, hey, I just don't understand. There's not much I can do to help you at that late stage of the game. Okay, because a lot of this, a lot of these chapters are tied into to each other. You learn some top, some topics in one chapter and it's carried over to the next chapter and so on and so forth. So if you have trouble with the beginning chapters, you're going to have a challenge further down the road. So if you need help, get help okay i'm going to show you the, where you can get help you can have a lot of places where you can get more assistance here okay be responsible for your learning and you know basically don't play don't blame others this is this is on you now gcc students i have two sections the one o'clock and the 4 15 i'll see you guys at the 4 15. i can tell you right now if you want, I don't have a problem if you want to come to the one o'clock to get more information, okay? I've told my one o'clock people, if you need more information, come to the 415. Or for some reason you can't do the 415, you know, do the one o'clock and that's fine. I don't have a problem with, with, with that at all, okay? Now, furthermore, to give an additional information with respect to where you can go out. My SEC students, their section is a little bit longer time-wise. It's on Fridays from 1 to 3.40. Now, all three of you are using the same books. So you're going to be given the same tests, everything. I try to maintain the same chapters as we progress. 
And so uh, that gives an opportunity to jump in in another section to get more information or to hear it again. Okay. So you get feel free to come to it. You don't, you don't have to ask. It's not just just you got the link. Click on the link. You got the times now. Come on in. Not a problem. All right. So as for SEC, you I just stated you have a additional chapter, and of course your labs and what we call a nomenclature test. All right. So um, let me. Any questions about that aspect of it? What I want to do is I want to go into Canvas and I want to do a quick tour about Canvas. So let me switch my view. I want to switch into the studio view because my Canvas looks a little bit different than your Canvas. Okay. Here we go. Oh, there it is. All right, so here's a class. This is what, according to Canvas, tells me is the Canvas view. On the left side, you have the links for a variety of things. When you click the home button, uh, you should come to this section. Now, you have announcements. I communicate by a couple, two ways. I send email and I use announcements that you'll find within the Canvas. Now, with respect to email, What's important about email is, um, where are we at here? Are you viewing, yeah, there it is. Uh, when it comes to email, don't shoot me an email using my EDU account. That EDU account is, is like packed with all kinds of spam. I call it spam, but I get email from the department, from the Maricopa Community College, and, and from SEC and GCC and so forth. Your stuff, your question, if you send me an email, may get lost in there. I don't check it as often, okay? So that's why I tell you, use the Canvas email. The only email I get in Canvas is email from you. I get nothing else, period. From, from, I get it from other, my other sections, but it comes, I don't get anything else from the chancellor, whatever, so forth. I get it strictly from you. It's tied into my cell phone. I can read it on my cell phone. Nine times out of 10, I can answer it on my cell phone. You get an answer pretty quickly. I try to get my answers back to you within the 24 hours, okay? So use the, the Canvas email. If for some reason Canvas is down, then by all means, uh, uh, check, uh, send it to my EDU, and uh, definitely I'll be looking out when I know Canvas is down. Okay, announcements. <clears throat> I, I send an email and, a, um, and, and create an announcement in which two professors from Dr. Dana and Dr. Kim are gonna be having virtual practice sessions. Okay, so that is the announcement. The information you need is sitting in there. It has the link, one, uh, Dr. Kim uses Zoom and Dr. Dana uses uh, WebEx, but the link's there. They're gonna have certain days of the week where they will have practice sessions concerning uh, the practice problems for, for the chemistry, which are the worksheets, okay? So there's a good opportunity for you to do that. Now, I also included in there uh, the link for tutoring. There's two, two types of tutoring. Uh, right now, their tutoring starts tomorrow, Wednesday, and that is the tutors there are, um, uh, other fellow students who have completed the course. And then later on the week, the faculty starts their tutoring, uh, tutoring sessions, okay? So you have tutoring there. Uh, there is what's called Brain Fuse, I believe. That's a tutoring uh, uh, service that you can use it for any class. I would save it for any other class that you're taking because you have tutoring uh, going on uh, for chemistry here at, at GCC. What I'm trying to find out is SEC also offers uh, online tutoring. I'm trying to find out if I, if my uh, GCC students would be allowed to go to my G, uh, uh, SEC tutoring system and vice versa. So they're gonna get more opportunity there. If that doesn't work for you, 
I do have time between my sessions. I have my first class ends at 2.15, so approximately from about 2.30 to 4 o'clock, uh, a lot of times I am available to do a Zoom, okay? Uh, at being an adjunct instructor, I'm not required to be to give uh, uh, office hours, but I offer them as needed on an as-needed basis. But shoot me an email, say, Dr. Fred, uh, I need to meet with you. We can meet either Tuesday or Thursday in between my, the time there. And if those hours don't work for you, we can arrange some other hours, do a Zoom some other hours, okay? Like I said, I'm here, I can work with you. I got some latitude and we can do that. Now, obviously you already found the Zoom switch, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? The link, but I also have the YouTube uh, Zoom recordings. All the Zoom uh, sessions will be recorded. And then once they are recorded, then uh, Zoom converts them to an MP4. That takes a little time. It depends how, how long the file is. And then I upload it to my channel. And uh, then YouTube converts it to its format. So it takes a little time there. So I would say I try to get it in there within that same day. But at the most, the latest is the next day. I did the, the, I've already uploaded the first one. It's been up there. So, uh, and it's already been viewed. Okay. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. So just in case you missed the class, you can uh, view what we talked about because I will record uh, the session. Okay. Uh, some students have subscribed to that channel. I don't get paid for that. So don't, <laughs> so because that way, being subscribing to it allows you to be notified when the new one's been uploaded. And you don't have to be, you know, checking periodically. So you're welcome, you're welcome to subscribe to that channel. Uh, what else? I got the syllabus. Now down here, there's a little thing called study mate down at the bottom left. If you click that, we will eventually uh, start to deal, uh, work with what is called nomenclature. And what that is, is a fancy word for name that compound. For example, carbon dioxide, that is the nomenclature, that is the name for carbon dioxide, okay? So we're eventually going to start learning how to name these compounds, and 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 and, and it's important. We're going to start, I, I, I make an analogous to uh, the, the English language, or any language. We all start with the alphabet. In our case, chemistry, our alphabet is the elements. Well, once we get the elements worked through, we're gonna put those elements together to make compounds. Okay, just like we get the letters together to make words. Well, once we make the compounds, we're gonna put the compounds together to make chemical reactions. Analogous to getting the words together to start making sentences. Okay, and so we got to learn the alphabet to begin with, and then we're going to learn how to make compounds and how to name them. And this little tool will help you. Uh, and why didn't it show? Let me do this for a second. Okay, that's why I wasn't there. When you click on this little link, this pops up. There's a variety of quote study guides, if you will. Let's go to the flashcards. What I did is I uploaded 143 names and formulas for compounds. So this kind of helps you to learn to start naming compounds. For example, the name here is lead Roman numeral two sulfate. I understand you don't know what the Roman numeral means, or you will eventually, we'll get to that. But if I flip it, then it gives me the formula, P, PBSO4. Remember that here, we it, it doesn't support subscript and superscript. So that four really is a subscript O. For more on that in later. And there's 114 of these that you can utilize to help you start learning to name compounds. You will have access once we're done and we start talking about the periodic table and the trends there. You will probably be somewhere in the order of three or four thousand compounds that you can put together, mix and match. You, you'll see that, that you can start putting 
because eventually it amounts to this. We've got positives and we've got negatives. And we're going to mix and match the positive and negatives to make compounds, different compounds. Okay. Or you can do the matching game where you pick up here. In this case, um, you do the, the name, magnesium 2 oxide, and it gives you the formula. And you are to select what the formula is. And that's, that's what happens when it's correct. That's it. And then through. So there are some tools there for you to help you out. All right. So um, if we go to the modules, let me go back to the student view so make sure that you are seeing your view. The modules, everything, all the chapters, all everything's put together for you in modules. So everything's all combined. You don't have to go searching all over the place looking for stuff, okay? We got the welcome module, okay? It gives some information about the syllabus, tables you need to print, how to submit PDF files in Canvas, because we're going to be doing that. When you create a PDF file and you need to submit it. So this information is needed. You have an activity coming up. This is a welcome video. So everything is there for you. You don't have to go around looking for stuff. So that's your first module. The second module is additional resources that I put in for you. These are simulations of different um, topics that we're going to talk about. For example, there's an interactive periodic table that you can click on any of the elements and then you get little videos on about the element, what it does, what's it used for, all kinds of interesting information. We have one here called build an, an atom that when we get to get, we get to learn about how atoms are put together, this little simulation will give you more of a picture of how it works, okay? So more additional resources for you here. Then finally, every chapter as I stated, has in it, I'm going to click that, it starts off with a chapter overview, a little PDF file that tells you about what we're going to talk about, okay? So you know what we're going to talk about. The textbook, you don't have to buy a textbook. All the textbooks you need are here. They're in PDF format. This is the first one, chapter one textbook. So everything labeled chapter one O excuse me, OER text, open resource. These are open resource textbooks. That means they are free to you, they're free to you know, whomever. Uh, they were put together by our department, okay? So uh, we're trying to help reduce the cost of books. Textbooks out there, as you, I'm sure you well know, they're, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars depending on a type of textbook. So you don't have to buy any textbooks. If you need a textbook, because for whatever reason, there's a multiple general chemistry textbook, textbooks out there used in that you can just pick up, pick up any general chemistry textbook if that's what you need. But you don't need that. We've got it here. Okay. Now, every chapter, every chapter has videos already pre-made with uh, that Dr. Kim, Dr. Kim is the coordinator of Chemistry 130 here at the GCC. She created uh, a, all the videos, all the pre, I wanna call them pre-videos on the topic, okay? These videos are different from the videos I'm gonna have. My videos are simply what we talked about for our, our Zoom session. So you already have access to the information. So you can read the overview, read the textbooks, they're not very large. Okay, each chapter, look at the videos beforehand, and then you come to class, you're familiar with what I'm going to talk about. And it's a lot of times I add a little more information, you know, and uh, it hopefully becomes a little bit more clear for you. That is the topic. Then you have the worksheet. Every chapter has a worksheet. Those are problems pertaining to that particular chapter. These are the things that Dr. Kim and uh, Dr. Dana are offering as far as uh, virtual practice sessions. They'll be going over practice problems, okay? Then if there's any activity or homework, obviously every chapter has a homework, it's sitting there, okay? And you can, you can click on any of the chapter and you can see that's the way it's been put together for you. Now I go over this because in the past I did not. And then, I would get like halfway through the semester, the question would be, well, where do I get my textbook? Okay. Well, that 
you shouldn't have to ask that question then. You're there it is. Everything's there for you. Okay. You don't have to go around hunting around to look for stuff. And and we decided to put it on modules and make it easy for you to find what you need to find. And there it is. Okay. All right. Uh, the syllabus, if you click on the syllabus link, uh, the thing I like about this is one, obviously you have the syllabus, which I emailed to everybody. So you have a digital copy of that already, but it's also here in the syllabus page. You can also find it in the module, in the welcome module. Okay, but what I like about this one is that there's a course summary. It shows you everything that is coming up and what is due, okay? And so you, at, at, at a glance, you know what's coming up, okay? So there shouldn't be, hopefully, no question about when, what's due and so forth. If that doesn't help, then guess what? You have a calendar. Far left, click on the calendar. And in the calendar, it shows you your assignments. Now it's gonna show all of your classes. So in this case here, we got all the classes here. Okay, that you may have, uh, but it tells you when's due, what's due. Now, an additional feature to the calendar is this little link right here called calendar feed. If you click on that, you got a link to this calendar that you can highlight and copy and email to yourself. When you email it to yourself, it creates uh, a, uh, a ICS file, I believe it's called. And then you can open it and they will dump it into your calendar on your computer calendar on your computer or on your cell phone. So therefore that calendar you're viewing here in Canvas, you will view on whatever other electronic device you wanted to see. So there shouldn't be any question about when something is due and, uh, and what's coming up, okay? You can also set up your, your Canvas to notify you when things have been graded. Uh, also, I believe you can notify you when things are coming up and what's due. So uh, do check check on that so there shouldn't be anything because when it comes to assignments um the activities and the homeworks all have due dates okay uh but all those two assignments will be open all the way to the end of the semester but there's going to be a penalty late penalty for that i'll have more to say about that here in, in a bit okay any questions so far concerning Let me get back to four o'clock. Okay. Uh, I got a question. The sure. uh, you said the periodic table we could print and stuff like that. Was that under uh, the tables? So yes. Where you were showing. Okay. Yes. And I'll go back to that real quick. Um, where am I at? Uh, if you go back to the welcome, so the welcome, the module, the very first module, you'll see I, there's a welcome link, but down here you'll see tables to print. So if you click those, okay, you end up with Spock, but <laughs> you got the, the periodic table, the two PDFs. Now what those are, are tables that we're going to utilize a lot. Uh, those, especially the periodic table. Uh, that periodic table, I'm going to make reference to it so much, you're going to be sick of it, <laughs> okay? Uh, this one, come on. This is the shapes table. There's something going on with my memory, but there is a more a table here, more, graphic, more graphics there. If you print that, you'll see it. But this is the shapes table, and this is the periodic table. This is the periodic table we're going to utilize, okay? And this periodic table, it is loaded with information. Right now, it looks foreign. It looks a bunch. It looks like looks like a bunch of boxes with letters in them, and it should be because that's what it is. Okay, but we're going to be able to do things like this at a glance. You'll be able to say, okay, um, if I compare lithium with uh, cesium, you'll be able to predict which one is bigger with respect to radius, just by its position in the periodic table. Okay. You're going to be able to do the same thing if I look at, uh, let's say, magnesium and compare it to chlorine. 
you'll be looking at that and you're going to say, hmm, okay, I know which one's going to be bigger. Obviously not right now, but you'll be able to. I promise you that. Also, you're going to be able to look at the periodic table and determine there's only three, three types of elements here. You're either going to have a metal, a non-metal, or a metalloid. And that periodic table at a glance will tell you where the metals are, and where the non-metals. And that is governed by that little stair step. Anything on that stair step is a metalloid. I don't want to get too much into it. Anything to the left over here, these are all metals. And everything to the right of that stair step are non-metals. That's important to know because it's going to tell us what type of chemical bond um, um, we can create. But I don't want to get too deep into this. We'll, we'll really get into this uh, in detail. Down here at the bottom, solubility rules. You're going to be looking at that. And you're going to be able to predict whether something is insoluble, whether calcium hydroxide is soluble or in water or not by those rules. Very straightforward uh, forward rules. This is another table that we're going to utilize. This is called the activity series. We'll be able to look at a reaction and determine whether a reaction will proceed as written based on that little uh, list of uh, active metals. And then you can see here that we have what are called polyatomic ions, okay? We have both negative charge and only one positive charge, but we're gonna be able to use those to create, take our alphabet and put it together to make words. So things like sodium sulfate, you know, you might start looking at some of the foods that you eat because I might ruin your appetite and some of the stuff that you eat because I'm going to tell you, hey, check this out. This is what you're eating. You're going to be like, whoa, okay. <laughs> All right. So, but we'll have more, a lot more on that later on. So the periodic table is important and the shapes table is important. I've been asked the question, can we use anything any of these resources when we're doing the homework and activities? And yes, by all means, use whatever you want, you need to answer whatever homework questions, activity questions. We do ask, however, that, you know, treat the exams as if we were in person. And obviously, you know, we're you know, using, uh, you know, the, the, the system of, you know, we trust you that you're going to do the right thing when it comes to the exams, okay? because we, we will not monitor the homework and we don't monitor the activities, but we can monitor the exams because if you ever exit from it, uh, Canvas picks up that you have exited from it, or at least it will send a signal, okay? All right, so where are we at here? Let me talk about the uh, syllabus a little bit. I'm not going to touch on all the aspects of the syllabus because you know you have it. You can read it. I'm just going to touch on the on the major aspects. Obviously, the first page tells you about information about myself. Now, um, we have a website. It's a course website. The link is given here. Okay, and in that go you go in there and take a look at it. But it has it has the information. It has the textbooks. It has the videos. All the information you have in your uh, modules for this class is on the course website. We just took that information and put them in modules, make it a little easier for you to access. So um, feel free to go in there. There's other other videos about topics. They're pretty interesting topics that we uh, you may want to look at. All right, here's our Zoom sessions information. Uh, obviously, you're here. You got the Zoom working. Uh, if you're not using the link, I give you my meeting ID and my passcode. If you're using the, the app, the passcode is L-I-T-O, all lowercase. Okay. Uh, tutoring, we talked about tutoring here. Here's the link for tutoring. Plus in that uh, announcement, I've uh, added some more information, not only with tutoring, but the uh, virtual sessions. These are 29... Uh, competencies that we are required by Maricopa, these are topic subject matters that we have to cover in general chemistry, 29 of them, and they're listed there. 
Okay. Now, questions ask me about attendance. Well, do I need to go to class? Well, you know, this is your money. That's all I got to say. All right. No, I'm not required. I don't take attendance. All right. I don't take attendance other than the first day because I'm required. Nobody shows up. I got to drop you. But we do have other things that we keep we keep an eye on. Attendance has a broad definition. Not only does it mean coming to the Zooms as part of attendance, but also completing assignments. So therefore, if I go into Zoom and I see that you haven't been in it for seven days, or you haven't turned anything in, you know, you got seven missing assignments, or the assignments you turned in are like, like empty, and, and you know, some students have gone in, answered one question, and then and submitted it. And then at that point, then we have the option to withdraw you. So uh, the first two weeks are going to be pretty busy. You've got three chapters that go pretty quick. We go a lot of information. But then after that, things got to settle down, and we get into a bit of a rhythm. It's approximately one, one uh, chapter per week, OK? The question was been asked um, during exam day, do we have lecture? And my answer, do we have lecture? And the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, the exam days, obviously they're online, but I will still be here on Zoom. Normally, if we were in, in on campus, obviously we wouldn't be covering anything else. But what I what I do during exam days. I'm here to answer any questions concerning the exam or topics or those chapters. And if there's not, I continue with my uh, other chapters and I continue with the lectures. Uh, that does help out because what happens, we kind of get ahead a little bit, which is good for you because toward the end of the semester, we end up with two or three, uh, what I call study days, okay? That we can utilize to go over any, any problems you want, uh, go over any chapters you want, and so forth. So, um, if you've not assigned, if you have not uh, picked up a lab, you must pick up a lab for SC, a GCC students. The lecture and the lab are two separate entities, two separate classes. So, if you are taking the lecture, which obviously you're here but you did not sign up for the lab, you must sign up for the lab. So try to get one as soon as you can, as soon as possible, okay? If you're having trouble getting into one that you're interested in, email the instructor. Nine times out of 10, the instructor will allow you to get in. I'm not teaching any labs. I, I don't, uh, I, so I'm not really involved with the lab part of it. So, but you can see who's the instructor and you can, you can send an email to that instructor. If you are having trouble getting a lab, uh, let me know and I'll see what I can do for my end. Okay. If you withdraw from the lecture, the first 10 weeks of the class, and you also are taking the lab, you must withdraw from the lab. Okay. Now, let me restate that. If you withdraw from the lecture in the first 10 weeks of class, you must also withdraw from the lab. So if, you know, you wait day 10 weeks day plus one, you're good to go, right? To continue with the lab. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> All right, any questions so far? All right, uh, if you take the final exam and I can't give you a withdrawal, so if you are considering or thinking about a withdrawal toward the end, I hope it doesn't reach that point. But if, the, if that's the case, um, we can't let you take the exam, the final exam and then Afterwards, find out, say, hey, I didn't do so well. Can I get a withdrawal? We can't do that. Okay. One, one added, added feature about withdrawals if you are uh, under GI Bill or you have a, a, a student loan or some kind of scholarship, you be careful about withdrawals because that could put a little wrench into your monies for the semester. So be careful about that. Okay. Find out. If that's okay to withdraw, that's what you have to do. All right, we have activities, as I mentioned, roughly uh, with exactly one activity per chapter. Uh, the lowest one will be dropped, and that's worth 25%. There are uh, homeworks, there's 15 homeworks, of which the lowest one will be dropped, and that's worth 25%. The exams, there's five of them, 100-point exams, and that is worth 30% of your overall grade. 
and then the final is worth 20 percent okay uh standard grading scale 80 uh, 90 80 70 60 etc okay um what else makeup exams it things happen sometimes you can make up you cannot make up an exam uh, I have the, the the latitude that if you miss one of the five exams, I can take the um, score from your final exam and substitute that for any of the missed exams one through five. Okay, I can do that for one. Uh, so if you have to miss more than one, I, I can, sorry, I can't do that for more than one. So keep that in mind, okay? As I mentioned, with the exception of the exams, because those exams have a specific time that they must be taken and a specific date. The homework, like I stated, they're open now. You can, the homework and activities are open right now. You're more than welcome to go ahead and finish work ahead. Some people do that, you knock out, you know, two or three homeworks beforehand, not to worry about it, that's, that's your option. But as far as it being late, um, all the homework has a due date and anything past the due date has a penalty of 10% per day, which uh, Canvas calculates. And what that means is this, that it, it goes up to the fifth day. On day number six, the maximum number of points that you can get is 50% of what the points are worth. So for example, if an uh, assignment is worth 10 points, and you you know you missed it and you put it off and you come back on day six to knock it out and you answer all the questions correct the maximum number of points would be 50 percent 50 percent of the original 10 so five points but that's better than zero points right so try not to you know try to knock them out <coughs> you know as they become due which brings me to another point i would not set a due date for any homework until we are done with that chapter and so if we today we're going to start chapter one i would not say hey that homework's due on thursday because i know we're not going to be done on thursday either we might why not i will give you two or three days after we're done for a due date okay so you see it on the schedule say chapter two is due today well that's incorrect i haven't had time to move the due date don't 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 get all freaked out remember they will be due after we're done with that chapter. And like I said, like I stated, we're, I'm here Tuesdays and Thursdays. There are some sections that don't have the live Zoom. Uh, they meet like one hour per week. So it's basically on your time. So they're expected to go in there and do all the work themselves. And then they meet on one day, on like a Monday for one hour and talk about whatever they're going to talk about. And then you're basically on your own. I, I try to do my section as if we are in class with lecturing the whole bit. Okay. So I uh, so uh, we have a little bit of latitude with respect to homework and activities. I do not have much latitude with the with the exams. I get a little bit, but not a lot to work with. Right. So keep in mind. Uh, activities and homework are really open until December the 14th, but with the penalty. Uh, December 14th, I said April. All right, so what else? Uh, I talk, talked about the exams. If you miss one, I can make up, I can substitute your final exam for that. Uh, academic integrity, you know, this goes without saying there. I leave that for your, your reading. All I can say is that we only keep track of the uh, exams and uh, canvas does track you it finds out if you leave that for a period of time so now it is you know if, if you have to leave for whatever reason i've had cases where people their power went down things like that that's understandable shoot me an email right away and we'll, we'll look into it but with homework and activities it, it doesn't matter use whatever resources you need to to finish or to do the assignment all right. Um, hey, finally, our, and that's why we stated earlier about the homework, uh, because we named this tentative schedule. The homework is flexible, okay, and activities. However, uh, the, the exams are pretty much set, and so it's up to me to make sure we do complete 
uh, those chapters uh, before uh, the first one, which is September the 7th. Okay, saying we will, we will. In fact, we'll be ahead once we, once we, you'll see as we start lecturing during the exam days, we're going to be jumping ahead. We'll be ahead of schedule. So that's a, uh, overall, if you are taking the lab on the far right core is the corresponding lab. Okay. So um, any questions, um, some course information that, you know, I'll leave it to you. Uh, GCC, you know, uh, Netiquette is a, all I ask is just, you know, just so respect for each other, that's all. <clears throat> Any questions so far? I believe that's all we got. The COVID, we had to put it in there, but obviously we're online, so it's not going to affect us if, if the people that are face to face have to be converted. We're going to be online anyway. So, but if you are taking face to face, the class to be aware of that COVID information. Okay. Um, I this brings uh, recording in the classroom. Now, um, I do understand, uh, and this came up. It was just, I didn't think of it, but it, it, I gotta make, I gotta bring it forward. If there is a problem with respect to me uh, recording this, and you don't want to show uh, your image then make sure that you shut off your um, your uh, webcam, okay? There's a lot of reasons people don't want to be recorded. Some are religious, some are not religious. I don't have a problem with it, but just shut off your webcam. If you're still concerned, put some tape over your webcam camera, okay? Um, if, there's, if that is an issue with respect to the first activity, send me an email, explain to me why, and we can, we'll work with you there. Because the first activity is basically a real short welcome activity uh, video that we, we want you to make of yourself. All right. Um, any questions? Didn't bore you too much, did I? <laughs> hmm? All right. Okay, Paola, can you hear me? I just looked at the message. Are you, uh, can, it, can anybody hear me? Okay, so there's, I got a couple of people say they can't hear me. Okay, so I got three people say yes. Okay, I guess mine's okay. So you might check, you may wanna check your, your connection. All right then. All right, if there are not any more questions, comments, concerns, what I want to do with the limited amount of time we have left, I want to just jump in to the chapter. Okay. And this is chapter one, obviously. All right. Now, what I want to do. No, oh, Paola, you say you can't hear me. Um, is that, are you using headphones? You may, if you are using headphones, you may want to unplug them and see if the, your sound is coming through your speaker. And it's not your headphones. Okay. All right, chapter one. All right, what I want to do here is it's kind of demonstrate uh, and about the conservation of matter. And what, what I do here is I take a blade of grass and I get a powerful microscope and we find one carbon atom. And if you look in the periodic table, carbon is number six. It's got what we call protons. Six protons, that's what defines an atom, six protons, okay? If it had seven, it would be another element, but it's got six protons, but it's in a different form. It's in the form of some tissue in the grass of some sort. It could be anything, but it's still carbon. 
All right. Well, my apologies to my uh, vegetarian friends because my partner's a vegetarian. She didn't like this demo, but I'm sorry. I'll have to change it. Cows eat grass, right? Okay. So now that carbon is now incorporated into the cow by someplace. It could be a fatty chain, a muscle. That carbon is incorporated into the tissue of that of that cow, but still the same carbon atom that we marked in the grass. It still has six at, uh, protons, but now it's in a different form. All right, well, unfortunately things happen, right? Now that carbon gets converted to the gentleman here eating that hamburger. And that gentleman now incorporates that same carbon that was in the form of the car in the grass into its body, his body. Okay. Well, humans metabolize, and one of the products that we metabolize uh, is carbon dioxide. And so that person can exhale, because we all know we're going to exhale carbon dioxide, and it comes out back into the atmosphere. Still carbon. See that C there? still carbon but it's now it's incorporated with two oxygens bonded around it but it still has six protons that's what defines that carbon it's just in a different form and guess what that carbon that now is now in the form of carbon dioxide back in the atmosphere and the cycle continues and it goes in back into some grass material okay you know theoretically it is quite possible that carbon atom could have been in me at one point in time, and then even in you in some other point in time, or some living being that lived 10,000 years ago, okay? That carbon atom was incorporated in there. And that is what, what we talk about conservation of matter, okay? Because we're gonna need that information when we start talking about uh, 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 balancing equations. We have to take into effect the fact that matter is, Con conserved. It is not created. It's not destroyed. It's just moved around into a different form. Okay. So what exactly is chemistry? Okay. Well, chemistry is essentially the study of the composition, the structure, and the properties, and the physical and chemical changes that matter undergo. Because everything around us is made up of matter. Okay. Everything. And chemists, we, that's what we do. We study the composition. What is matter made up? Of? What is the structure? What is the properties? Okay. And, and you think about it, it's really crazy because going back to carbon, you know, if carbon is put together in a certain manner, guess what we have? We have graphite. Graphite is a dry lubricant, very slimy. We use it, use it for, in, like if your keys don't go in too well in your lock, Hit it with some graphite, slides in a little better, right? But you know what? You change that structure a little bit, the way they're put together, you have diamonds. Still carbon, six protons, but in one form, it's, it is a slimy material, and the other form is the hardest thing on earth. And their structure is how they were put together affects the property, the physical property, and the, and the chemical property. So it's amazing how this how this works. Subtle changes. We're going to learn about the atom. Okay, now the concept of the atom is not new. It's been around for you know thousands of years. The Greeks dealt with it. But what we have learned is that atoms are made up of what we call subatomic particles, specifically what are called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Those combined make up what, what is shown here as the atomic mass, the atomic mass of an atom. Now the electrons are so tiny, so small relative to the neutrons and the, and the protons that we don't even give it a mass. We, we basically say, well, it's basically massless, but it's not. It's just that they are so tiny in size, but yet those crazy electrons have a big effect on how matter works. Case in point, 
you can go you can google this or look up a youtube and you can see some crazy guys playing with sodium metal if you you if you look that up you'll find these crazy guys take some sodium metal and throw it into a lake or something and that thing bubbles up like crazy and the person is a loud boom because sodium metal which is an element is very reactive and once it reacts to the water it forms sodium ions it's still sodium but it's different because it lost an electron. The sodium metal, the element, I would not put in my lips because it would burn the heck, explode. But the sodium ion, which is you find in sodium chloride, not a problem. Put, on, put that in French fries all day. They're both sodium. And the only difference between the two is that little tiny electron that dissipated, that, that reacted, that went away. It's amazing. We'll learn more about that. It's amazing what the effects. We're going to talk about chemical bonding, how things are bonded together. And of all the chemistry involved in the in, in around Earth and, or in, around the universe, as far as we know, there's only two types of chemical bonds. Isn't that crazy? Only two types. You know, and the type that it is depends. Earlier, remember, I showed you the periodic table where we got metals and nonmetals. Knowing what's a metal and what's a non-metal, if a metal and a non-metal come together, you form one type of chemical bond. If two non-metals come together, you form a different type of chemical bond. Then we're going to talk about reactions. Got all these chemicals, all these chemicals around us, and yet it boils down to six different types of reactions. That's it. Six types. Some of us were familiar with, but you got a lighter, you flicked your back. You did one type. That's called a combustion reaction. Okay. Right now, if you're running off a if you're running off a battery in your electronic device and you're listening to me, there's a reaction occurring there that creates electrons that allows you to run your apparatus. Those electrons again, same electrons that give you a bad hair day and you got static, your hair goes poof, crazy electrons. All right, we're going to learn about the trends in the periodic table. Okay, be able to determine which which atom is bigger, which is smaller, uh, what kind of charge it's going to have. Okay, things like that. What kind of properties are going to have based on where they are in the periodic table. Okay, then we're going to talk about acids and bases, and you're already familiar with this. Okay, all right. You had too much Taco Bell. You got a little heartburn. What do you take? Anybody know? Tums. There you go, Tums. Tums is a base. Okay, you got a base, you react it with an acid that's in your stomach, you neutralize it, you get rid of some of that acid. So keep this in mind. If you like that alkaline water, alkaline water means it has a pH of eight-ish or maybe up to nine-ish, so they claim, which is like eating Tums, and you ingest it, what do you think you're doing to that alkaline water? neutralizing it, leaving behind the salts. So, um, doesn't do much other. Once it's in your stomach, it gets neutralized. <laughs> all right. So anyway, and electrolytes. You know, we all know about electrolytes because, uh, you know, we buy a, a container of electrolytes and it, and it says, well, drink this water, it's got electrolytes. All they are are the atoms, the elements that either have lost or gained electrons. They either have a positive or a negative charge. For example, sodium, as I stated, is in, in this elemental state uh, form, has no charge. We'll, we'll learn why. Has no charge. So we got here's the symbol for sodium no charge at all. But it has one little electron that wants to get rid of very badly. And there's a reason for that. And it ends up with a positive charge. Now, this is the guy that you are ingesting when you're drinking electrolytes or chlorine. It becomes chloride. Okay? Those are the electrolytes. Those are elements that either have gain or loss of electrons. Those are the things that are very important in your chemistry. Sodium is very important in your body. You know, for muscle contraction, your heart needs sodium, but too much sodium ion, you got high blood pressure, that's not good. Okay. So we'll we'll get back to all that and <clears throat> to electrolytes. 
It's a matter of these elements losing or gaining electrons. Then we're going to talk about what's called, someone says, is that mole? No, it's not mole. It's called the mole. Okay. It is nothing more than a number. It is a big, big number. If you take 6.02 and now move that decimal point over 23 times, that's how big that number is. We'll come to that. We'll get that. That's a humongous number. And then we got this big old fancy word here that kind of freaks people out and they say, what the heck is this? Okay, stoichiometry. Okay, you're already familiar with stoichiometry. Okay, you got a bicycle. Oh, better yet, you got a car. Okay, how many tires does that car need? Or exactly the stoichiometry of a, the frame of a car and the tire is a four to one ratio. You got a bicycle, the tire to frame two to one, okay? Or a unicycle, the tire to frame is one to one. That is stoichiometry. We're gonna find that when we put reactions together, it's not gonna be a simple one to one sometimes. A lot of times it is. One of A, one of B, we get a product. Occasionally, you know, a simple one-to-one -one would be one, one A plus one B to give us maybe one A B, okay? But sometimes we need maybe two Bs, okay? To give us maybe something like this. And the stoichiometry is a one-to-one -one here because it's understood there's a one there. And this, in this case, it's a one-to-one. -one. In this case, it could be a one-to-two. It could be a two-to-three, you know? And we're going to learn about this stoichiometry, and this is because we're going to start putting numbers in front of these equations to balance the chemical equation, because we are governed by the conservation of matter that says, if I start off with 10 carbon atoms in the reaction, whatever I do to it, I'm going to need to end up with 10 carbon atoms when I'm done and when everything's all said and done. So we're going to talk about that. All right, let me finish this one and then we'll be good done. We'll continue on Thursdays. Intramolecular forces. All right, these are things that, these are molecules and how they react with each other, which, which affects the properties. If we get a cup of water and a cup of honey and we put them together and we start a race, we empty them. Obviously the water is gonna win the race, right? Because the water is not as viscous compared to the honey. The honey is a lot more viscous because the intramolecular forces of the honey molecules are stronger and they hold those molecules together, making it more viscous. And it has a big effect on how the properties of material, okay? Big time effect. Like I explained earlier with graphite and, and diamond, these intramolecular forces and bonding forces have a big effect in, on them. Solutions, you're familiar with solutions. You know, you like coffee, you deal with solutions. You know, soda pop is the solution. And we're gonna to touch a little bit on gases, not a lot. All right, um, this is, let me finish this. My area of chemistry that I was trained in is called organic chemistry. Even though I did a multiple things in chemistry, my area I started off as, as an organic chemist is just like scientists that, that uh, a doctors, you got you know, your brain doctor, your muscle doctor, you know, so on, your lung doctor. Chemistry is the same way, you know, different fields, different areas. Mine is organic. Anyway, let me stop here and we're going to stop it on slide four. And um, any questions so far? So, yeah, get, get on the canvas if you have not done that. Get familiar with where all your stuff's at, okay? And